This is E.T., and this is Sam Langford, a fighter of such quality that he still ranks, after more than a century, as the greatest of the uncrowned heavyweight champions. This is Gunboat Smith, a leading contender of his day. He was interviewed, I think, in the mid-1920s, and he said when he was asked who the best heavyweight he ever saw was, these words. That's an easy one, Sam Langford, and nobody ever came close to being as good as he was at his peak. He ruined me. I was all through after that last fight with Langford in Boston. The gunboat knew of what he spoke. He'd fought the greats, Jess Willer, Jack Dempsey, both champions, a Harry Wills, and also Fred Fulton it was he who put Langford on the steep decline. I want to emphasize two things at this point. Had Fred Fulton met a very healthy Langford in his prime, it is not just my opinion that he, Fulton, would have been put out in the first round had Langford preferred to do that. In other words, the Langford he met in the fight I will describe uh, was somebody who was already on his way out. I'll have uploaded soon at least two, maybe three, videos devoted to the great Sam Langford. Well, you probably don't know anything about Fred Fulton, in part because, although a competent fighter, Fulton's rise to the top halted just short of great. Fred Fulton was born in the early 1890s, I think it was 1891. Hometown, Rochester, Minnesota, his job was that of a plasterer. These are days when fighters had to work, and also when there was no sheetrock. This story is about Fulton's first meeting with Langford. There were two, one in June of 1917, the other in December 1918. Both were won by Fulton. Now here's the story of that first meeting. The place is the Boston Armory. The date, 19 June 1917. The United States is just getting into the action along the Western Front during World War I. Langford is not a big man. His height about five feet seven inches. I'm trying to figure this 170 centimeters. Reach of 74 inches. I think it was longer, but that's the official one. 188 centimeters. He was 34 years of age, which is getting toward the end for a really productive fighter. But consider that already he had 185 fights on record, probably three times that number unofficial. He fought heavyweights when he himself weighed in at a lightweight or middleweight. Fred Fulton, a big guy, almost six feet five inches. That's about 195 centimeters. He had a reach of 84 and a half inches. That's 215 centimeters. That is more than Sonny Liston's reach. It's about the same reach that Tyson Fury has, although Fury is six feet nine inches tall. Fulton is 26 years of age. That's a prime age in boxing. Like Larry Holmes decades later, Fulton's jab was described as rapier-like, and he had a good punch in both hands. His manager, was Mike Collins. He warned Fulton, stay away from Langford's left hook. And he repeated again and again, do not attempt to knock him out with your right. Collins knows that Langford's left is deadly. He also knows that his protege, Fred Fulton, has been unbeaten since 1914. Yes, you'll find two L's on his record but they were disqualifications. Now, he wasn't beaten. It would be a sad thing 
for Fulton to lose against somebody even as great as Sam Lankford when Lankford was as old and beaten as he was. Well, let's look at the fight there in Boston. Sam started out slow. The Boston Herald reported that, and I'm quoting, he looked as slow as a truck horse with layers of extra weight draping his massive frame, unquote. Punches Sam landed mostly did not hurt Fulton. Well, with one exception. Fulton, in round one, began to show overconfidence. He began to smile. His manager calls, was so upset, he said, stop that, you crazy fool. Fred, at that point, tried a right hand, which, as predicted, Langford slipped. Then he, Langford, landed a really powerful left right above Fulton's ear. Between rounds, Collins was furious. But Fulton said, look, I know better now. Then he pointed to the lump behind his ear. Fulton now, and for the rest of the bout, followed the plan. Until round four, that's when Sam was very open to a Fulton right, and he was getting very tired. Fulton let go the right. It was aimed at Langford's chin, but quick as Langford was, he dodged a little, and the punch hit him in the temple. Sam experienced such pain, he later said, it was like a thousand needles shoved into my skull. In his corner, Sam said, try to get my left eye open quick. I can't see out of it at all. One of his corner men said, hey, nothing's wrong with it, Sam. It ain't swollen. By round six, Sam's only hope was to get a hold of Fulton and pull him in because he could not see him, not in the damaged eye, not in the good one. During round six, Fulton continued to fight at long range, pelting Sam with lefts and rights. Sam, when he returned to his corner, said, I can't see out of either eye. And they stopped the fight. A number of experts said Sam should quit right now. But Langford would continue to fight until he was nearly the age of 40, maybe beyond. We're not sure when Sam Langford was born. When he did quit at around, let's say, age 40, this was in the mid-1920s. Fred Fulton, after his two wins over Langford and dozens of other impressive victories, continued his undefeated streak. Again, he has two L's for losses, but uh, those were disqualifications his undefeated streak since 1914. And he was about to get his long overdue shot at Jess Willard's heavyweight title. But before the papers could be signed, Fulton took on a relative unknown named Jack Dempsey. And Dempsey dispatched Fulton in the first round. That earned him, Dempsey, a title shot against Willard. Willard then suffered what may be still the most vicious beating ever meted out to a champion during a championship heavyweight bout. Fulton never got his title shot, even though he remained a top contender through, I think, 1922. So what exactly did Fulton's punch to Langford's temple do? It severed a cord to the optic nerve. And the result was Sam, when he continues to fight for seven more years, is fighting with one eye, later barely with any sight at all because of cataracts and damage caused by boxing to that good eye. He could see, as he said, shapes and shadows during good light. That is it. Type in your comment. Do hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel. Do you see the bell icon? Once you're subscribed and you tap that bell, you'll be notified of future uploads. Also, if you would, share these videos with others on social media. Thank you very much.